Hello, and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the discontinuities of rational functions. Before we get to the discontinuities, let's describe a rational function. A rational function is of the form f of x equals n of x over d of x, where n of x and d of x are polynomial functions. So polynomial functions, they have all variables have positive integer exponents, um, and so basically it's just a fraction of two polynomial functions. So the first thing we want to do is we want to describe the domain. So is there a restriction on what we're allowed to plug in for x? Well, yeah, because we have a fraction, it is possible that the denominator could be 0. And if that happens, that's not going to be defined in uh, the real number system. So we say the domain is going to be restricted because d of x cannot equal 0. So the domain will be all values, uh, so let's say will be all values, except uh, x where d of x is equal to 0. So we would call that the restrictions of the polynomial function. And these restrictions, when, when the denominator is equal to 0, that can do one of two things to our graph. So when we have discontinuities in the domain, we could have a vertical asymptote. That is a vertical line, and we usually do a dashed line to represent it because it's not actually part of the function, it's just saying the graph is going to get really close to this and it's never, ever, ever going to touch the asymptote. We know that it's a vertical asymptote when there's a linear factor in the denominator that cannot cancel with any factors of the numerator. So a linear factor, I should say, in the denominator that cannot, cannot factor, uh, simplify with any factors of the numerator. That would be a vertical asymptote. So for example, if we had f of x equals x over x minus 2, this factor, x minus 2, is not going to cancel with anything in the numerator. There's no factor of x minus 2 in the numerator. So that means that x minus 2 equals 0 would describe a vertical asymptote of the graph. And of course, we want to get x by itself, so the asymptote will be given by the equation x equals 2. So on the graph, we would have a vertical line, and that should be a line, not a curvy thing, at x equals 2. The other thing that a discontinuity could be is a hole. A hole is literally an open circle. We've seen holes before because if you've ever looked at absolute value inequalities, if you're graphing an absolute value inequality, you use a hole to represent when the start of the solutions is not included. So a linear factor that can cancel with a factor of the numerator will be a hole in the graph. And then to find the exact coordinates of the hole, we plug in the restricted x value into the simplified equation there would be an open circle at that location. So for example, if we have g of x is equal to x times x minus 2 over x minus 2, now we see that we have a restriction because x minus 2 can't equal 0, which means x can't equal 2. However, if we look at this carefully, we can simplify with that x minus 2 factor in the numerator, giving us just g of x equals x. So while this is uh, a simplified version of the equation, this g of x still has the same restrictions. x still can't equal 2. But because the factor simplified or it canceled out, we know that there's going to be a hole at x equals 2. And then we can figure out where the y coordinate is because we can plug in 2 to the simplified equation. And we can't say g of 2 because remember 2 is not in the domain. So what I usually do is I just say 2 and I put a circle around it to remind myself that it's an open circle. And then I just say, okay, anywhere I see an x in the problem, I'm going to replace with 2. We just end up with 2. So there would be a hole at 2, 2. And so actually we can graph this because that's actually just the graph of um, g of x equals x, which is just a 45 degree angle line. However, at 2, 2, we would have an open circle. So otherwise the graph would look like a nice straight line, but there would be that open circle at 2, 2. All right, so in each example, we want to describe the domain of the function. Now it says the domain of f of x is just going to be of whatever the function name is, since none of them are none of them are f of x. And what we're going to do is on the next four slides, we're going to see graphs. We're going to match each of these to the graphs we see on the next four slides based on the domain alone. Okay? So starting with letter A, we know that the domain is going to be restricted because t squared minus 7t plus 12 cannot equal 0. This is a quadratic. We want to see if it's factorable. Uh, yeah, because we can find two numbers that multiply to 12 and add up to negative 7. That would be minus 3 and minus 4. And we can use the shortcut since the leading coefficient is 1. So t minus 3 times t minus 4 cannot equal 0. Therefore, each factor cannot equal 0. So t minus 3 
cannot equal zero, therefore t cannot equal three. Then here we have t minus four cannot equal zero, which means t cannot equal four. So there's our two restrictions on the domain. If we want to write the domain out, we would say it's from negative infinity to the smaller restricted value, which is three. Then from three to four is defined, and then from four to infinity is defined. So we can plug in any x values we want, or t values we want in the entire world, except for three and four. And it doesn't ask us to do this, but we can just preemptively decide whether there's gonna be vertical asymptotes or holes at three and four. So if we look at the numerator, the only factor we have up there is one minus t. Um, that's not gonna simplify with either t minus three or t minus four. So we can make the assumption, well not the assumption, we know that there will be vertical asymptotes at t equals three, and there'll be a vertical asymptote at t equals four but really it just asks us for the domain. All right, in example B, uh, what we're concerned with is the denominator equaling zero. Uh, we know that it's not allowed to because that's not where this will be defined. Um, this is a difference of squares, so this would factor into x minus six times x plus six. Set each factor equal to zero. This means that x cannot equal six. This means that x cannot equal negative six. Uh, therefore, the domain, we'll write the domain since that's what it asks us to do would be from negative infinity to our smaller restricted value, the smaller to the larger, and then the larger to infinity. So that's the domain. Let's decide what's happening at each of these restricted values. If we look at our factored version right here, x minus six times x plus six, I actually see a factor of x minus six in the numerator as well. So that means that if we were to simplify it, we would simplify that factor, indicating to us there is a hole at six. So we know there's a hole at six, and if we wanted to determine the exact coordinates, so we know the x coordinate is six, but we don't know the y coordinate, we would take the simplified, so the simplified uh, equation would be p of x equals one over x plus six. And we would plug in six, that would give us one over six plus six, which is 12. So there's the exact whole at six, one twelfth. Um, x equals negative six, that's gonna be a vertical asymptote. since that factor will not cancel. That one x plus six is stuck in the denominator, okay? In letter C, let's see what happens here. We're gonna set x squared plus one equal to zero, and, or say, sorry, say it cannot equal zero. Um, it's impossible for x squared plus one to equal zero. The, the minimum value that x squared plus one could be is one itself, because the smallest value x squared can be is zero, because any time you square something, it's gonna be zero or bigger. So therefore, there are no restrictions on our domain. That means that this will be a continuous graph. There will not be any breaks in this graph. And last but not least, letter D. Letter D, if we look at here, we just have three. Three can't be zero because three is three. So again, there are no restrictions on this domain. The domain would be from negative infinity to infinity. And if you look really carefully at letter D, in fact, if you break up, if you distribute that denominator of three, we would have A over three minus six over three, which would be two. That's actually just a linear equation. So letter D is just a, a straight line. Okay, so now as I said, we're gonna match the domains to their respective graphs. If we look at our first graph, I see no breaks in the domain, so that means it can't be A because we're defined at three and we're defined at four. It's not B because we're defined at negative six and we're defined at six. Letter C looks good. And then letter D, I said letter D was linear. This is not a straight line, so it must be the graph of letter C, f of x over x squared plus one. If we wanted to confirm, we could plug in a point or two. So I see one point is the origin. If we plug in zero, I see here we would have zero over whatever, which would be zero, so that works. We could plug in two, two just to verify, but I feel pretty confident that graph one is letter C. In graph two, it looks like there's a vertical asymptote right here. I see the graph is not crossing that. That is given by x equals negative six, or I think this wasn't x, but that's okay. Oh yeah, it is. And then it looks like there's an issue right here at six. There's a hole at six. And it looks like it's six zero, but I think if we recall from the previous page, it's one twelfth. And so if we look at our domains, which one wasn't defined at negative six and six, that would be the graph of letter B. Graph three, I see we have some issues here. We have a vertical asymptote like right here. We have a vertical asymptote right here. This looks like x equals three. This looks like x equals four. So where, which equation did not have three and four defined? That was the graph of letter A. So this is the graph of letter A. 
And lastly, we have uh, a straight line with no restrictions. That's going to be letter D. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at, we've looked at determining the discontinuities in the domain, but now we also have to consider horizontal asymptotes. So if we look here, we can see there's going to be a horizontal asymptote right here. Um, the question is, how do we know where it's located? Well, we're going to let n be the degree of the numerator and m be the de degree of the denominator. If the degree of the numerator is bigger, if n is bigger than m, there is no horizontal asymptote, there is a slant asymptote. And we are not going to cover that in this uh, le lecture. Um, we're only looking at horizontal asymptotes. So they do exist, we're not going to look at those though. If the two degrees are equal, then the equation of the horizontal asymptote is given by y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator and the leading coefficient of the denominator. And then letter C, if the numerator has a smaller degree than the denominator, there is a horizontal asymptote and it's given by the equation y equals zero. All right, so let's look at some examples where we find the horizontal asymptote for each function. And this one, so the first thing we need to do is decide what the degree of the numerator is and the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator is two, the degree of the denominator is two. Since the degrees are equal, let's go back here for a second. Since the degrees are equal, that brings us to letter B. It, we're looking for the leading coefficient now. So the leading coefficient of the numerator is three. The leading coefficient of the denominator is one. Therefore, the equation, there is a horizontal asymptote and it's given by three over one, which is three. Our next example, we have f of x equals three x cubed over four x squared plus one. Here the degree is three and here the degree is two. Since the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the de denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. There would be a slant asymptote. Okay, and then lastly, letter C, we have f of x equals 3x over 6x squared plus 3x minus 1. The degree of the numerator is 1. The degree of the denominator is 2. Since the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, there is a horizontal asymptote, and it's given by the equation y equals 0. All right, so we're going to do a few examples of finding all discontinuities. That's holes, asymptotes, um, for each graph of the equation. We'll start with the... Uh, discontinuities in the domain. So first we're going to look at domain. What we know is that x squared minus 6x plus 5 cannot equal 0. If we were to factor this, that would be x minus 5 times x minus 1 cannot equal 0. Therefore, x minus 5 cannot equal 0. x minus 1 cannot equal 0. So x can't be 5 and x can't be 1. Now we need to decide. We know that the restrictions on the domain are these restrictions vertical asymptotes or are they holes? Well, we're going to go back to the factored piece right here where it says x minus 5 times x minus 1 because we could rewrite g of x as x minus 3 over x minus 5 times x minus 1. And if we look at it in factored form, I see that neither factor of the denominator is going to cancel with that x minus 3. So that means both discontinuities are vertical asymptotes. And I'm too lazy to write those words out, so I'm going to say v period a period. And the vertical asymptotes are given by the equation x equals 5 and x equals 1. When we write the equation, we don't use the not equal to sign. That's just the restrictions on the domain. And, and again, the vertical asymptote is not part of the graph. It's just telling us there's going to be, uh, the, the graph is going to get closer and closer and closer to 5 and 1, but it's never going to reach it. It's going to either go up to infinity or down to negative infinity. Okay, the next thing we need to do is decide whether there's a horizontal asymptote or not. For the horizontal asymptote, so I'm going to say HA, we look at the degrees. The degree of the numerator in this case is 1, and the degree of the denominator is 2. When the degree of the numerator is smaller, we do have a horizontal asymptote, and it's given by y equals 0. Okay, our next example, we have 4x squared minus 2x over 3x squared minus x minus 2. First, let's start with our domain. So the domain, 3x squared minus x minus 2 cannot equal 0. If we factor this, that would be 3x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 2 because the target product is negative 6 and the target sum is negative 1. And these multiply to negative 6 and add up to negative 1. Now we can factor by grouping. We get 3x times x minus 1 plus 2 times x minus 1 cannot equal 0. So x minus 1 times 3x plus 2 cannot equal 0. Um, here we get x can't equal 1, and here we get x can't equal negative 2 thirds. 
Okay, so we have two breaks in our domain. We need to see whether they're wholes or asymptotes, so what we need to do is factor the numerator. The numerator has a GCF of 2x, and that would give us 2x minus 1 over, and then we have x minus 1 times 3x plus 2. Since neither factor of the denominator is going to cancel with either uh, any of the factors of the numerator, we have two vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes, we have x equals 1 and x equals negative 2 thirds. One thing I didn't mention last time, just because there weren't any, but maybe we should just specify we know that there are no holes in this graph, so we can say none. Lastly, we want to determine um, whether there's a horizontal asymptote, and if there is, what is it? So the horizontal asymptote, we need the degrees. The degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 2. Since they're equal, we need one more piece of information from each. We need the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient of the numerator is 4. The leading coefficient of the denominator is 3. So we do have a horizontal asymptote, and it's going to be given by y equals 4 over 3. So then I'm going to come up here and say h period a period is given by y equals 4 over 3. And those are the discontinuities of this example. I think this is the last one. Yep, one more example. We have h of x. All right, first thing we want to do is figure out the domain or restrictions on the domain. If we were to factor this one, we would have x squared plus 2x minus 35 is not allowed to equal 0. We factor, we get x plus 7 times x minus 5 cannot equal 0. This means that x can't equal negative 7. And this means that x can't equal positive 5. Okay, so we know we have two restrictions on the domain again. Um, let's look at this completely factored form. We have a, a numerator of x minus 5, that one factor. Here we have x plus 7 times x plus 5. Aha! So this time we do have a hole at 5. Uh, this also means because that this factor is not going to cancel, we do have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 7. When we're identifying the hole, let's make that negative really clear. When we're identifying the hole, we want to know the y-coordinate 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the simplified equation, that would be 1 over x plus 7, that's going to allow us to plug in 5, so we can say 5, remember we don't say h of 5 because 5 is not in the domain, and that would be 1 over 5 plus 7, which would be 1 12th. So we have a whole at 5 comma 1 12th, and then lastly we want to determine if there's a horizontal asymptote, so I'll get it ready, and let's see, we have the degree of the numerator is 1, the degree of the denominator is 2. Since the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, there is a horizontal asymptote, and it's given by y equals 0. So we do have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. This has been a look at discontinuities of rational functions.